everybody welcome back to the channel dance you care if you're new to the channel please hit that red subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon next to it to stay up to date so in today's video it's another lore video of you guys of the Raph Raph Rafe the Raph himself Philip Ojomo I hope I hope I'm pronouncing that right Philip Ojomo Ajomo well I'm gonna stick with Ajomo so it'll be his backstory his lore I want to get to the point for you guys and let's get to it but before that as you guys already know random facts of the day do you guys know the original the original name for Xbox was direct Xbox designed to show how Microsoft's direct X graphics could improve the console market hmm I never knew that direct Xbox Xbox sounds way better than direct Xbox my opinion but let's get to the lore and let's get to some gameplays in the background kick with you Kick up your guys' feet, relax, whatever you guys are doing, play in the background, whatever. Let's get to it. Philo Ojomo. There's another apparition, more terrifying than anything I ever seen. Hunting amongst the shadows here. It moves like a silhouette appearing and disappearing at the sound of a dreaded bell. It's impossible to track it. Several times. It has caught me without even me even seeing it closing in. Often convinced I have my back covered. It has promptly materialized right behind me to strike from the close range. Stay still and watch the fog. Don't move, don't blink, and for God's sake don't breathe. Don't breathe. If you can control your fear long enough and can show your self-control, sometimes it is impossible to see it shimmer as it glides forward if caught at just the right light. I pray for your safety. Villa Ojomo came to this country without anything than hope for a new beginning. He was happy as he got offered a job at Auto Haven Records, a small scrap yard where bribe cops turned a blind eye for the somewhat shady business that took that took place. Ojomo didn't care. He had seen criminal activity up close in his homeland, and as long as he didn't get involved, he let things be. He just fixed cars and handled the crusher, something he did really well. A car went in, and a small metallic cube came out. It was not until one gloomy day that he just by accident saw some blood coming from one of the uncrushed cars. As he opened the trunk, he found a young man, gagged and with tight hands with panic-filled eyes. Ojomo freed the man who managed to run 10 feet before Ojomo's boss stopped him and slit his throat. As Ojomo demanded answers, he got explained to him that he meant nothing more than a simple executioner as more or less every car had a soul in them as this was a service the scrapyard provided to certain clients. Ojomo snapped and went ballistic. He threw his boss in the crusher and let it slowly compress. As the head stuck out, Ojomo grabbed it and pulled head and spine out of the body. Then he left and was never seen again. Memory 656 The boy holds his lucky bell and stares out into the growing dusk. Night is coming and with the promise of monsters worse than anything his father has ever described in his campfire stories. Rumors of an endless massacre terrify him and he hopes his mother and father will soon return. They heard a radio broadcast promising safety to those hiding and they left with others to investigate. He spent the whole day staring at the dirt road leading out of the village waiting for them to return. A few returned with wounds and horror stories. Endless stories of death, destruction, and mayhem. He didn't understand any of them. They hate us. Why? Why do they hate us? Because radio and television tell them to? What did I ever do to them? You were born in newly created Nigeria. That's what you did. You were born a night northerner. His grandmother approaches. Do you see anything out there? Philip shakes his head. If you see anything, if you see danger, ring your father's bell and hide with the others. Philip nods and stares at the bell. Will they come back? His grandmother hesitates for a long moment. I don't. I don't think so, Philip. They're hiding. Tears fill his eyes as his grandma disappears into a small thatched home. He feels a tear slip down his face and he knows, just knows, he will never see his parents again. Memory 657 Grandmother Abigail has a smile for days. A terrible smell of rotting flesh drifts into their village and she tells Philip it's the stench of decomposing cows. Philip nods but knows she's just trying to protect him from the truth. He heard the elders talking by the way, so many dead and they are burning the bodies for there is an investigation. Who is burning the bodies? Killing crews? Human butchers? 
Man paid to make his people disappear as though they were an invest infestation of cockroaches. A deal with the devil for money. He hates them all and tries to sleep but can't. All he can do is stare at the door where he hopes against hope to see his parents again. But he knows they're never returning and all he has left is grandmother Abby. Carriage return. Abby approaches him and lies beside him. He leans his head against her and closes his eyes and cries. He hears her open her mouth to say something, but no words come out. He opens his eyes and she's crying silently. Before he can say anything, a bell rings. Her face grows hard as she grabs him by the wrist and leads him outside to a hatch. One later they're underground with the muted sounds of slaughter vibrating through the ground. He squirms in Abby's embrace. She holds him tighter and tighter as cries and shrieks swell into an unbearable pandemonium. He never realized humans could emit such sounds and it's all he could do not to scream himself. He skirms and Abby covers his mouth just in case. Memory 658 Silence Horrible gut-wrenching silence. Phillips shifts uncomfortably in their makeshift, makeshift bunker and listens for something. Anything. Abby nudges him. Let's see your math skills. Philip. Maths? She's trying to distract him from the hell outside. 6 plus 24 minus 8. He works out. 22. She smiles and nods. She loves another challenge and another. He answers with growing tears in his eyes. She touches his face. Don't think about what is happening outside. Listen to my words and play the game. He nods and tries his best to work out her challenges. But he can't help but think about his mother. His father. They said Mass would strain his brain. Make him good in school. Give him all kinds of opportunities his father never had. His father? He'll never do math with him again. Never play chess with him again. Or hear his stories. And why? Because of men who take money to the devil's work. Carriage return. Abby nudges him. Phil asks her to repeat the challenge. Just as the cry of a toddler rips through the silence. He instantly looks to his grandmother. Her eyes go wide as she stands and approaches the ladder. Phil runs to her and grabs her hand. Don't go. Please. Please. She hesitates, staring at the hatch above. I cannot leave the boy out there alone. Philip nods and wants to hold her soft, wrinkled hand forever. But he lets go and watches her as she barely ascends the ladder and disappears into the scorching day. Wow, that was that was end of Philip Ojimo, the Raph Rave himself. What a story! His people got slaughtered from. People who just, I don't even know. I, there's a word for it. I can't figure that word out right now. Is that the tip of my tongue? I just can't get the word out. But people that get paid to clean up people's mess, I guess. I can't find a word. But yeah, his parents died, never came back. He, man, never got to see his parents after they went to go find a better place. Or at least try to find a better place and didn't work out. Obviously, as you could spec spec speculate, that they got killed and murdered, and there were those rotting bodies. And the grandmother, she tried her best to hide, to hide Philip from the truth, but he was probably thinking inside his head. He probably knew a little bit what was going on. People dying, people screaming. Come on now. And his grandmother going up for that boy crying at the end. Oh man, you know she ain't coming back. Philip's all alone, scared. Don't know what's happening. You can't blame him for being scared. But he sees so much criminal activities, and that his lore, he go work at the Auto Haven Car Wreckers place, and man, for him just to kill his boss like that, throw him in a car and. Man, just pull his head with the spine attached out. That's pretty gruesome. And just to disappear, you definitely know for sure the entity take him. Now I know the history of that bell. The meaning behind the bell for Philip. It's his father's bell. So now I know. I did not know that. That is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. And all you guys know the lore I do too and you guys just here you guys already know about the lore and just want to hear about it again thank you for being here guys so that's the end of the lore so I'll commentate my gameplay for you guys just to end the gameplay I know some of you guys just want to watch the gameplay so I'll just comment 
commentary what I'm doing in this game and what was I thinking in certain situations but let's get to it guys alright so right now I was getting chased as you can see getting chased from Ghostface I was trying to dodge him he was a he was a decent killer I mean good decent player I guess so my teammates popped the last gen and then he was on his way to open the door I'm surprised that I escaped Ghostface that moment back there he just lost me I, I I don't know he just lost sight of me so I was running I didn't want to stand by my partner right there just in case if he was to creep up on me I'll be a one shot so once he he opened the door I was like okay we got this we got this so I was like hey just heal me just heal me I don't know where Ghostface is but I'll keep an eye on that door so she kind of my teammate kind of messed up healing me like right there you guys saw that he messed up a little bit uh, I, I think he was kind of scared don't know because Ghostface could be creeping around making his way behind that door right there but I was debating my teammate was down over there my teammate wanted me to go we couldn't make our decision so then that's when my teammate just left and I was debating I saw Ghostface there I'm like shoot should I go and save him I don't know maybe there's a chance that Ghostface has not know it know it is pretty much no one escapes death pretty much what it means for those of you new to Death by Daylight no one escapes death know it anybody that calls know it the killer has know it there's a lit totem somewhere it's a one shot kill that activates when the doors are open so I didn't want to risk it I didn't know what was going to happen my my only thinking was Ghostface is right there in the corner camping waiting for me so I was like I'm sorry teammate I wanted to become a hero and save you but I was assuming he was camping right there trying to wait for me use his special and I guess my teammate just gave up when AFK that's it. that explains the crows over my teammates head so in the game Dead by Daylight when you stand still or anywhere inside a locker or anywhere and you stand still do not move for a certain period of time you get those crows around your head that alerts the killer where you are because he, he can hear it from wh however close he is to you my teammate my teammate here just died gave up You're like you know what I lost at least some of my teammates escaped that's the very best but yeah, if you guys made it this far and haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell kind of stay up to date. See you guys next time.